This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmuth. A new era in college sports is here. Just over a week ago, the NCAA changed its rules so college athletes could profit off their name, image, and likeness, known by its abbreviation, NIL. The law allows athletes to make money for things like endorsement deals, signing autographs, social media content, but even though it started, there is still a lot of confusion about these new rules. Former UCF football player and co-founder and CEO of GMTM, Joey Grant, is here to break down what this means for the future of college athletics. Talk about your time at UCF, when you were there, what position you played, and, and what your experience was like. Yeah, so I was uh, at UCF, born and raised in Orlando. We, we, uh, we are both Lake Brantley graduates, but I didn't go too far. I went to UCF uh, from 2011 to 2015. Um, I actually growing up, I was a baseball player, um, but when I went to UCF, put on some weight, uh, played center, uh, started for the Knights for, uh, for four years between defensive tackle and center, uh, won a Fiesta Bowl with my, my good buddy, Blake Bortles, uh, Latavius Murray, kind of the team that Coach O'Leary uh, took to the Fiesta Bowl, uh, helped put UCF on the map um, and, and played my, my days here in Orlando in front of the the home front, hometown fans, and uh, it was a great experience. Really enjoyed it um, playing for Coach O'Leary. So. Mm-hmm. How did you come up with the idea to create this platform uh, for athletes to get more exposure to schools and, and help them with the recruiting process? How did that all come to shape? And, and can you uh, explain what uh, GMTM does? Yeah, absolutely. So, so GMTM is an athlete network. Um, I would think of it as a LinkedIn for sports, uh, where the idea came about. Uh, obviously, I played at UCF, uh, played football for the Knights. Um, I also worked in recruiting for Coach O'Leary, for Coach Frost. Um, and, you know, that's really where I saw on one side athletes who, who really I wanted an opportunity, opportunity to get a scholarship, opportunity, you know, investing in my craft to make it to the next level. Uh, then on the other side, um, you started to see from an organizational basis, whether it's college or other organizations in general, uh, camps, you know, different ways where athletes are looking to get recognized. Uh, it, they, they don't really have the tools put in place to really identify athletes, uh, best build relationships and best engage with them. Um, so what GMTM is a platform um, for organizations to best market opportunities. Um, you know, visits for their universities to educate athletes about a scholarship opportunity. Now it's really expanded from just the college recruiting market from, you know, now we have 13 Team USA national governing bodies um, that use our platform for talent identification, for marketing, um, to build and engage with athletes. And it's all on the premise of, you know, athletes want an opportunity uh, in multiple forms from the time they start playing competitive youth sports uh, all through, you know, high school, college, wherever their ending point is uh, in athletics, they're continuing to seek uh, opportunities and our platform helps first harvest those opportunities on behalf of the organization and then engaging the athletes uh, seamlessly through the platform um, where the result of that is a profile of record, uh, a digital record where they have their highlights, their videos, everything about them as an athlete that says who they are, what they know, um, publicly available for organizations, for other athletes to be able to see. How has the pandemic and the, the lack of face-to-face interaction and the move to this more digital world, um, how has that impacted uh, your company? Uh, it's, been, it's been huge. Um, I think even, even before the pandemic, you, the, really we wanted to use technology to help best connect sports. Uh, you look through all the industries and you see technology, what it does is it increases access and it really cuts the cost. So for athletes who are looking to get noticed, they usually have to pay to travel and go to a camp, pay to travel to go to a visit. And so we've always had the vision of how can we make this as accessible as possible? Mm -hmm. The pandemic was a little bit of a forcing function where now all of a sudden sports operates so physically where every every organization in sports was now cut off from their athletes, cut off from their network and the ability to find new athletes. Sports was more effective than it was in World War II. And so what we worked to do was provide solutions. Um, and through that, uh, we, we were able to see, you know, organizations like Team USA Bobsled, who couldn't run one event, one showcase to find athletes within a month, you know, be able to find 10 athletes, uh, 36 that went up to Park City, 
10 that are actually going to be on a USA bobsled affiliated team. We saw Division II, Division III colleges be able to field almost 50%, 40% of their recruiting class by doing different things like virtual visits. Again, just increasing the access. So I would say sports is pretty, uh, it's a laggard industry. Coaches are, they're old school, right? When you think of coaches, you think of old school, tried and true. And so um, they're, they're not ones to really jump on technology. And what the pandemic brought in the unfortunate time was uh, a cause for everybody to look for other solutions. And we happen to be there. Uh, and again, the mission is around increasing access and providing opportunities for athletes. And at the end of the day, that's something every organization can rally around. Speaking of laggard and uh, maybe living in the past a little bit, the NIL, the name, image, and image likeness ruling is sort of a long time coming, but I want to get your reaction to, to a few weeks ago when that ruling came down. Um, what did you think and, and how would you have used that ruling to your benefit while you were in school? Yeah, well, first, like you said, I think a long time coming. Um, I think, you know, when, when you look at athletes in, ge in general, I think the interesting thing is athletes are the really the basis of sport, whether it's ESPN, NFL, the NBA, these large behemoth billion dollar organizations at the center of, of everything is the athlete, the athlete in their performance, the athlete in their content the athlete and their impact and following from fans and other athletes. That's what sports consists of. It's, it's, it's gotten to be very big and very organization based and your, but at the core is the athlete. And what name image likeness represents is that, you know, essentially when you, the NCAA had defined amateurism before you're a professional, you can't profit on the following, the, the, you know, what, what your name could mean for, for a business, for an athlete, for a peer to want to purchase any information, whether it's your autograph or whether it's, you know, a lesson, anything really. Um, and so this has been really, you know, not consistent in terms of what students have been able to do, being able to get a job. So it really hasn't made much sense, but it, it really opens up, you know, a, a plethora of opportunity for the athlete. Um, how would I have taken advantage? I'm not completely sure because social media, these things have changed so much since I was in school. Um, when I first was at UCF, I remember downloading my Instagram. I remember posting my first photos and now we've seen the rise of influencer marketing. Um, and I think, you know, th these are some specific niches within NIL that will get broken down where, you know, right now as people understand NIL and sponsorships and opportunities, you know, really, this is talking about influencer marketing and, and the ability for athletes to influence consumers on purchasing different things. That's what historically influencer market marketing has been. Um, I think that that's going to be a, a very, very small portion of what this is. Um, as we go back to the first point of athletes and their influence in general, um, I think there that is a far kind of limiting structure where athletes haven't really been trained as much to be influencer marketers per se but influencers in general with the, again, their impact on the community with their impact and being able to give knowledge skills um, and, and learnings to other athletes who are seeking an opportunity. Um, and so that that's really kind of where we're fostered is the holistic view of an athlete. What are all the different ways that, that you could make money? We'll have more from Joey Grant coming up, including how the new name image and likeness rules could affect the recruiting process. Stay with us. This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. This morning, we're helping you better understand the new rules affecting college athletics. The NCAA now allowing athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness, or NIL. And the state of Florida played a major role in making that happen. The CEO and co-founder of GMTM, Joey Grant, who also played football at UCF, is back with us now to explain why he believes there's more to NIL than athletes just making money on social media. I want to hammer home on the missional aspect of the opportunities because again, I also see it for the athletes. You're starting to see, you know, coaches who are saying athletes don't be distracted. Don't, don't all of a sudden try to be an influencer marketing. What, what we're really passionate about is at the end of the day, again, it's an athlete's profile and athlete's content that makes up the opportunities. So for, you know, for you as a, as a, as a division two, II, division three baseball player, Every single day you're working on your craft, whether it's taking infield, whether it's studying film, all of these different things. 
what we're seeing right now is, is this content is becoming more and more relevant for people to want to evaluate. So for a division two, a division three, a division one athlete to be posting about, you know, their knowledge of a cover two scheme or a cover three scheme or a defense that's very relevant for people to want to see to give them an opportunity. Now at a certain threshold, that is also really, really interesting and intriguing educational knowledge for other athletes who might want that information for a, a young high school quarterback that hasn't quite gotten cover three um, to where their profile of record can be beneficial in, in ways where not only is this listed for the purpose of an opportunity, but now again, at a certain point, this can become an edu educational piece uh, that can be monetized. And, and most importantly, it's focused for the athletes. Mm -hmm. We're not telling the athletes, hey, you've worked for 20, you know, for 20 years to be a baseball player now we're going to teach you TikTok dances and hopefully you get a, you know, a Procter and Gamble sponsor. Right. Um, you know, th this is, this is kind of, I think some of the false premises of NIL that, you know, we're going to be really looking to, to help correct for the athlete. Yeah. Uh, how do you think this will affect recruiting? Uh, we're, I think it's evolving every day. You just, you saw the Miami announcement come out that, you know, I think the 500 million is going to be committed to NIL. I think, the effect that boosters will have uh, on this will be really, really interesting to look out for. Um, you know, the state of Florida, California, different states are handling you know things differently. Now the NCAA has come out with a more you know blanketed understanding and how how this will be handled. Uh, I think high school will be something to look out for, but um, I think it's really going to be you know monitored by. Uh, you know, how these organizations view it, handle it. And, and I think on the other end, how athletes um, are really, you know, dealing with this new opportunity. Um, you're seeing it kind of play out in different ways where you wouldn't necessarily expect. Would you expect one of the first deals would be, you know, Derek King, you know, signing the college hunks, haul and junk? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think it's very unpredictable right now. I think we'll see three to six months of a lot of activity, a lot of uh, organizations and athletes trying different things. Um, and our goal is to, to really be fundamental in the understanding of sports and of opportunities and of, you know, what, where the real value lies and, and be kind of a consistent base, um, you know, to come back to after all of this volatility. Yeah, it is super vague. And, you know, I think uh, it seems like they're trying to build a plane while flying. Um, and, and that's, yeah. and it's going to come, but like, the timeline it will come together but in the meantime you're seeing guys like dylan gabriel as well creating an own brand creating a website and a way to monetize his own brand without doing anything extra he already has a brand but now a way to monetize that brand and not everyone is dylan gabriel a division one quarterback um and that's your point that i think uh, that's that's the important point to hammer home is yeah if you have a big following already, this will certainly maybe assist in, you know, getting those ad dollars for posts or, or doing something else that, that would create some money. But, but really it's, it's just a way because so many players have been suspended, have been, have had to make a decision on whether to pursue my career in YouTube or continue to play. And this will really just, make that a lot more seamless and easy. And the decisions won't be as to your point, like you were talking about, you know, worried about going to, to lunch with someone. I mean, that's, that's how strict the NCAA was on this. And that's why I think it's such a, a, a shocking ruling because it really does take a, it, 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 the NCAA takes a blow here. Well, and I think it's it's just it's inevitable. At, at the end of the day, back to the first portion of the conversation, athletes are the source of value. Athletes are the reason that fans come out. They, they're why they want to tune in. Um, and and at the end of the day, athletes work extremely extremely hard at their craft and are you know people that people look up to, people watch, people are fans of. So I've seen it as an as as, as sort of inevitable, and it, and it's you know, an incredible time to, to be in the space and be working to, to help provide tools for the athletes. You know, to your point on the, on Dylan Gabriel, I think, you know, again, this, this kind of, he should be able to take every advantage, but starting a website, starting merchandising, you know, posting inventory, tracking sales, you know, finding users, finding people who are interested, finding buyers, 
these are all very complex uh, and very kind of nuanced things for athletes to learn simultaneously. And this is where, again, we're looking to help educate. You know, for Dylan Gabriel, you can go out and you can sell, you know, all of these things to UCF fans. Through our platform, we also have the Elite 11 who does their, you know, digital pro day where, you know, 450 quarterbacks are coming through submitting different videos, looking for educational content. We have other Division II, Division III, you know, Division I programs who are reaching out to quarterbacks across the country for the purposes of an opportunity. And he has a really interesting skill set and knowledge base. And so, you know, I think, again, it's a balancing act for all of these things. Um, different athletes will be able to kind of allocate different demand and resources to, to situate all these things, but it definitely isn't going to be a one size fits all case. What would you say to critics who believe that a student athlete should be thankful for the scholarship that he or she may have and to focus on school and sport and worry about getting paid after their college years? I would say that every, you know, at the end of the day, everybody has their own life is entitled to their own opinion. Um, but also, you know, the objective facts about sports is sports are essentially the marketing arm for, for a university, for a college. Um, those athletes who are on the field, they are driving, you know, on Saturdays, on, on, on Sundays, on Thursdays, they're driving the eyeballs that drive admissions, that drive money and endowments that make the whole wheel flow. And basically what people are saying is, hey, you know, these people who are providing all of this value to colleges, all of the access to opportunities in sports for, you know, 12, 15, 20 other sports sometimes for these colleges, um, that, that, the, that these athletes should just be happy, you know, with their scholarships. That very well may be true, but also we are not, you know, really a limiting society. We're a free society in a free market where people can make decisions you know, we have supply and demand, we have basic ec economics that have been, you know, basically cut off from all athletes. And so, you know, although this is a change, you know, it's not trying to, to, to steal from Peter to pay Paul type situation where it's stealing money. This is, these are athletes that provide value day in and day out for these universities that they have a market value that comes with this based off of, you know, social media content, all of these things that have come, come about. And now, the time has come where this is now being recognized and, you know, I see the trend will continue. And I think more and more value will go to the, will go to athletes over the next five years, over the next 10 years, over the next 15 years. Um, if, if, you know, we've talked about, you know, investing from time to time, if, 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 you know, you take a long, long view of companies of Tesla, of these different things, and you just ask yourself, will it be more popular or less popular? Will athletes become more followed? you know, from the time that they break onto the scene, they have content that will be followed or will they be less followed? Overwhelmingly, I think the case will be they'll be more followed and, and, you know, more value will continue to go to the athletes. So bottom line, student athletes certainly have a lot to look forward to. A big thank you to Joey Grant for joining us this morning. To check out his athlete exposure platform, just head to gmtm.com. I'm Justin Mormoth. Hope you have a great Sunday.